And what's up, Mighty Gang? How's it going? It's your boy, the Multitasker, and welcome back again to another reaction. I'm doing pretty good so far, more or less. Just busy as usual, except it's a little crazy and rough with the whole virus situation that made a lot of impact to everyone and I, I can completely understand what they're going through with this especially with lots of preparations with food water bread toilet paper paper towels wipes and sanitizers I mean, I mean this is I mean it's it's definitely one of the scariest moments that put a fear in us and it's just it's just rough and again I, I can respect that I, I, I totally get it but I gotta do what I have to do you know I would rather put a brave face on and smile through those rough times and stay positive and try to conquer that fear because that's what I'm gonna do I'm going to just, you know, survive in the day, do the best I can, and most of all, try not to get sick because that's the last thing I need in my life at a time like this. No, sir. Because I've been busting my ass and, and literally my legs are garbage and especially that my feet are sore as hell. I mean, just doing so much work at the outside of the lot that is considered as a hell of a workout and the price of that I had to do a lot of stretching to my legs and trust me it hurts like a son of a bitch but I had to walk with the pain walk with the pain so don't worry about me I'm I'm still alive kicking and just still breathing so I'll be all right just got to do what I have to do. But I will pray to everyone that are staying home, trying to be safe and health at the same time, because those are the two things that are that is considered the most important thing in life. And definitely I will pray to the Nightwish Army, and I hope they're all doing all right as well. So that's all I just want to say, just to get this out of the way, get this out of my chest. So... But I know that's you don't want to hear me brag about this. So, I mean, I, I I I understand. So it's time to get back on the grind because I got a brand new requested video that I'm gonna be reacting to, and which is the the, the title's called "The Captivating Career of Jushin Liger the Thunder," one of the most revolutionary the competitors in the sports entertainment. His reputation of aerial combat and one of the, the one of the most strikers in the new Japan Pro Wrestling, and which is he made the announcement that that he was retiring, and which is, that is really sad to hear. And WWE acknowledged of the response of, of his retirement, and that they welcome him. To be part, to be inducted to of the WWE's Hall of Fame, which that's going to happen in WrestleMania. And this is considered an honor for the Thunder to be, to be part of the inductees. So, I've never heard about this, so this will be a good time for me to, to watch the, uh, the highlights of his career. And I think that he's mostly been, mostly been, that he'd been on... Uh, a little bit on on a time at the Impact Wrestling, at least that's what I, that's what I heard. So this is a, a retro uh, perspective. So without further ado, it's time to react. <laughs> How does one sum up the career of Jushin Thunder Liger, who formally retired from the ring at the onset of this year, following a near 36-year run? If you were to say that he is quite possibly the greatest junior heavyweight wrestler of all time, regardless of any era, style, or region, you may invite some debate, but nobody's going to scoff at your stance. Liger's legacy as one of the most innovative, influential, colourful, and timeless performers in any weight class is assured. And when he hung up his mask and boots at the Tokyo Dome, the business was bidding adieu to a genuine legend. I'm Jack from Cult 
Shopaholic.com and this is the captivating career of Jushin Thunder Liger. Amateur wrestler in high school, Liger actually grappled with future All Japan Triple Crown champion Toshiaki Kawada. He attempted to break into pro wrestling after graduation, but his diminutive size got him turned away from New Japan's dojo due to the height requirements they adhered to at the time. Undeterred, Liger moved to Mexico to pursue training, and his pursuit proved arduous. Amid his struggle, officials from New Japan visiting Mexico agreed to take him back home, partially due to his obvious hardship. Under his real name of Keiichi Yamada, Liger wrestled his first match on March 3rd. 1984, where the 19-year-old lost to Shunji Kasugi. In 1985, Yamada competed in New Japan's Young Lion Cup, defeating young contemporaries in Shinya Hashimoto and Keiji Muto, the eventual Great Muta. He made it all the way to the final round where he lost to the aforementioned Kasugi after 21 minutes of action. Early in 1986, Yamada remained prolific, competing in the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Title League, wrestling established standouts that included George the Cobra Takano, Mark Black Tiger Rocco, and even American star out cowboy Johnny Mantel. He went on to win the 1986 Young Lion Cup, downing both Hashimoto and Masahiro Chono before winning the final match in March 1986 over Tatsutoshi Godo. That July, Yamada challenged for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight belt for the first time, losing to champion Nobuhiko Takada at Currican Hall. To pick up further seasoning and flesh out his skill set, Yamada went on international excursions, beginning later in 86. Using the name Fuji Yamada, he wrestled for England's all-star wrestling, squaring off with Mark Rocco for the world mid heavyweight belt, and teaming somewhat regularly with Clive Myers. Come the spring of 87, Yamada moved on to Stu Hart's Stampede Wrestling in Calgary, where he teamed occasionally with Owen Hart and Brian Pillman, and had singles mm. bouts against the likes of the Cuban Assassin and Gama Singh, the uncle of Jinder Mahal. Yamada also trained in Stu Hart's infamous dungeon in this time, before returning to New Japan later in 87. At the end of 1988, Yamada went away for a while before re-emerging with a new look. On April 24th, 1989, before nearly 54,000 fans at the Tokyo Dome, Liger debuted wow. the anime-based Jushin Liger persona, complete with heroic bodysuit and exotic-looking mask. Yamada looked for all the world to be the second coming of Satoru Sayama, the original Tiger Mask, in more than oh, one sense, and began to walk that same path on this day. He defeated Kuniaki Kobayashi on this date and continued forwards as the character, almost unbeatable from step one. One month later, on May 25th in Osaka, Liger defeated Hiroshi Hase to capture the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. He went on to reign for just 77 Seven days, however, before dropping the gold to Naoki Sano on August 10th in Tokyo. After dropping the belt to Sano, Liger picked up his winning ways soon enough, aside from losing to Sano in a rematch that September. At the turn of the decade, Liger inserted Thunder into his professional handle, just before embarking on a number one contender's round-robin tournament that ran through January 1990. He defeated the likes of Black Tiger, Akira Nagami, and Takayuki Izuka before finishing off Owen Hart in the finals on January 30th. One night later, Liger defeated Sano in Osaka to cap off a 20 minute battle, capturing the championship for the second time. And this time, Liger's reign would last far longer. In Hiroshima in March 1990, Liger successfully defended the title against a man who was quickly becoming a regular rival of his, Chris Benoit, the Pegasus Kid. The following month, Liger oh, technically wrestled on that. a WWF event, defeating Akira Nagami at a joint WWF slash New Japan slash All Japan card at the Tokyo Dome named the Wrestling Summit. He continued his winning ways into the summer of 1990 before being stopped on August 19th in Tokyo losing his junior heavyweight title to the ascending Benoit after an epic 15-minute battle. Really, after defeating Villano 5 in September to assume number one contender Benoit status, Liger captured the gold for a third time in Tokyo, defeating Benoit on November 1st. A month later, Liger actually wrestled in Baghdad when Iraq was on the cusp of the Gulf War, defeating Kantaro Hoshino in a match via countout. Following a few more successful defenses of his junior heavyweight gold, Liger vacated the belt in April 91 so that it could go to the winner of the top of the Super Juniors tournament that same month. After defeating Negro Casas in the semi-finals, Liger lost to Norio Hogana the same night, losing out on his chance to claim four reigns as champion. Not that he'd have Damn. to wait very long to win it, though, because he defeated
captured Hogana that June to achieve the four-peat. Over the summer of 91, Liger won another trophy of sorts when he defeated Pegasus Kid in a mask versus mask match in Fukuoka, earning Benoit's hood. His fourth reign as IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, however, ended in August when he lost the title to Nagami in Tokyo. He wouldn't regain it until February 92, but in the meantime, he became the high-flying darling of another promotion, WCW. On a Christmas night 1991 house show in Atlanta, Liger defeated Brian Pillman to win the WCW Light Heavyweight title, a true tape trader's treasure. The reign lasted two months, losing the belt back to Pillman at Super Bowl 2 in what may be the best pay-per-view opener in WCW history. During his fifth reign as IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champ, Liger competed in 1992's Top of the Super Juniors tournament, defeating such top-shelf talent as Eddie Guerrero, Koji Kanemoto, Fit Finley, and Two Cold Scorpio. After beating old rival Honaga in the semis, Liger won the tournament by going over on El Samurai, who had beaten him in the earlier round-robin portion of the tournament. The final match lasted over 21 minutes and ranks amongst the absolute greatest matches of Liger's career, with Liger matching Samurai's callousness en route to the big finish. Liger would, however, lose the junior heavyweight title to Samurai on June 26th of that year. Liger continued to split his time between WCW and New Japan throughout the remainder of 92, wrestling at Starcade and competing in tag team matches with Kensuke Sasaki in the former. On January 4th, 93, at a WCW New Japan joint show at the Tokyo Dome, Liger won his sixth junior heavyweight title, defeating Ultimo Dragon in a 20-minute war. This time, the reign would prove enduring, lasting nearly 21 months in all, not losing it until the end of September 94. That's when he was forced to vacate the belt due to a fractured ankle. Along the way, Liger turned away challenges such as Guerrero again, this time as Black Tiger, and also Dean Malenko. Earlier that year, in April 94, Liger devised a card devoted entirely to junior heavyweight stars, the Super J Cup Tournament. Held in Tokyo, Liger competed in a field of 14 of the world's greatest wrestlers, defeating Hayabusa and Ricky Fuji before being put away by the great Sasuke in the semi-finals. Weeks later, at the 94 Wrestling Dontaku show, Liger went to a 10-minute draw with Satoru Sayama, the original Tiger Mask. This was a dream match, but sadly, oh, it didn't so quite live up to one's okay. best hopes. The following month, Liger won the 94 Best of the Super Juniors tournament, defeating Super Delphin in the finals. Liger's September 94 ankle injury kept him sidelined for 11 months, returning in time to wrestle numerous matches during the 95 G1 Climax. The following month, he was part of history, wrestling the first match in the history of WCW Monday Nitro. There, he lost a former rival, Brian Pillman, inside the Mall of America. His WCW connection continued as part of a New Japan promotional war, representing his home company in defeating Benoit as part of a Best of Seven series at that year's Starcade, which New Japan ultimately lost to WCW. Earlier that month, Liger won the 95 Super J Cup, defeating Gran Naniwa and Ultimo Dragon en route to beating Gado in the finals. At the 96th January 4th Tokyo Dome show, and remember this was before it was called Wrestle Kingdom, Liger upped his junior heavyweight title total to seven, regaining the belt he never truly lost from Koji Kanemoto. This particular reign lasted nearly four months, ending at the hands of former Jacob opponent Sasuke in late April of that year. Over the months ahead, Liger captured the wrestling and romance promotions junior heavyweight tag belts alongside El Samurai. He also wrestled Macho Man Randy Savage in Sapporo and lost the best of the Super Junior final to Black Tiger. That August, Liger actually underwent surgery to remove a brain tumour and incredibly, he wasn't out of action for very long. He defeated Benoit in Yokohama in his comeback match the following month and during October's Super Grade Tag League, he unleashed an intriguing alter ego during a match against the Great Muta. In a bout where Muta fought dirty and even resorted to tearing Liger's mask off as he lay prone on the canvas, Muta went on to attack Liger with a chair, only for his opponent to reveal a painted face. This was the debut of Kishin oh, Liger, a more aggressive version of Liger that might remind some of Finn Balor resorting to his demon alter ah, ego. So Ultimately though, Liger lost fun. the match, but the Kishin persona demonstrated a wholly unique side of the Marvel. He ended 1996 with a match against one of the few junior heavyweights able to match him in longevity and influence, Rey Mysterio, at that ah, year's start. Ray, Ray. The January 4th Tokyo Dome card continued to be fruitful for Liger, as at the 1997 event, he defeated Ultimo Dragon to win not just another junior heavyweight title, but the other seven belts that constituted the famed J-Crown. He lost one of the belts, wow. the WAR International Junior Heavyweight Belt, to Yuji Yasuroka in June, and lost the other belts the following month to that pesky old rival, 
Style Samurai. During his time in possession of this near mythical Beltopus, because like Octopus, because yep, Liger retained it over Shinji, Otani, Koji Kanemoto, and the great Sasuke, remaining all the while at the very forefront of the division. In February 98, Liger began his ninth reign after defeating Otani in Sapporo. This reign lasted over 13 months and saw him make successful defenses over many of the usual suspects, including the great Sasuke and El Samurai, as well as Kendo Kashin, Kaz Hayashi, and Dr. Wagner Jr., before losing the strap to Kanemoto after a 32 minute contest in Hiroshima. He captured the gold twice more, defeating Kendo Kashin that October in Tokyo, before controversially losing it to Juventu Guerrera on an episode of Nitro the next month, and then really? regaining it a week later. This is, remember, WCW. By the time he lost the gold for the final time to Tatsuhito Takaiwa in July 2000, Liger's record 11 reigns totaled an also record of 2,245 Whoa. days, Holy or an average shit. of seven months per reign. As Liger wound down his days as an incumbent that's junior heavyweight champ, a, he began that, making waves in the junior heavyweight tag team division, capturing those belts on six occasions with six different partners, including Sasuke, Kanemoto, Akira, Samurai, Minoru Tanaka, and the fourth incarnation of Tiger Mask, all between between 1999 and 2012. In the year 2000, he ended New Japan's heavyweight division for a time, despite winning that year's J-Cup, defeating Gran Hamada and Shima in the final two rounds. More tournament wins followed in 2001, defeating Tanaka to win that year's Best of the Super Juniors finals, as well as winning the G1 Junior Tag League alongside Samurai, defeating Jado and Gado in the end. A long-standing veteran of New Japan, Liger expanded his resume outside the promotion, as well as his typical match types. He competed in his only MMA match ever for Pancrase in 2000. 2002, losing to Minoru Suzuki via submission. In January 2004, Liger won Pro Wrestling Noah's GHC Junior Heavyweight Belt from Takashi Sugura and went on to hold it for over seven months. As he neared his 40th birthday, Liger debuted Ring for of Ring of Honor as part of the Weekend of Thunder in November 2004. On night one, he defeated Brian Danielson while teaming with world champion Samoa Joe to defeat Danielson and Loki the following evening. Joe. During this period, Liger was a heel, heading up the stable CTU, or Control Terrorism Unit in New Japan. A different times during its three-year lifespan, membership of the stable included Liger, Jado, Gado, Rocky Romero, Minoru, Haruki Goto, Prince Devitt, and sometimes even James Gibson, also known as Jamie Noble. Yeah, At the conclusion I of CTU's reign, Liger joined a stable of New Japan elders okay. called Legend, which included Masahiro Chono, Akira Nagami, and Ricky Choshu, among others. It was during this period that Liger teamed with Nagami to defeat Devitt and Minoru to win the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team belts, reigning with them for five months in 2008. In this millennium, Liger has also made a few additional excursions to the United States, including some for national promotions. In 2005, for example, he lost to Samoa Joe at the first ever TNA Bound for Glory and returned to the company the following May in order to take part in the multinational World X Cup tournament. His lone match stateside for WWE occurred in August 2015, defeating Tyler Breeze at the first NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. What a bizarre but excellent matchup that was. He also wrestled matches for very well-regarded indies, taking on Tommy End or Alistair Black for a CZW slash WXW slash Big Japan show in Number Germany, while also wrestling the likes of Chris Hero and El Generico for California's Pro Wrestling Gorilla. He also won the Jersey All Pro Wrestling title in 2010, holding it for five months before losing it to a certain man named Kenny Omega. In the uh, early 2010s, Liger made numerous appearances for Mexico's CMLL promotion, winning its Universal Championship tournament at the start of the decade. That same year, he won the promotion's world middleweight belt from Negro Casas, holding it for over 18 months before losing it to Dragon Rojo Jr. A few years later in 2013, Liger teamed with Hiroshi Tanahashi to defeat El Terrible and Tamatonga for CMLL's World Tag Team belts, holding them for a couple of months. As the 2010s progressed, Liger worked matches for numerous different organizations, presented as a cherished elder statesman of the wrestling business, a certified living legend. Though his best days were behind him, Liger could still conjure up some of the magic that made him a megastar in his heyday. His match with Bushi in the 2014 Best of the Super Juniors was among the finest singles bouts of recent years for the 49-year-old. Two years later, at the 2016 in wrestling Dontaku, Liger attempted to win his 12th IWGP Junior Heavyweight belt against Kushida, but lost oh, by a submission shit. after a scintillating 15-minute match. A match with Will Ospreay at 2018's Strong Style Evolved was also comparable in its excellent quality. In March 2019, Liger challenged yet again for the belt he'd made famous, losing an absolute thriller to Taiji Ishimori at the 47th anniversary show in Tokyo. The following day, the 54-year-old icon announced his retirement, which would be effective at Wrestle Kingdom inside the Tokyo Dome in 10 months. 
Rollins' time. Yeah. But he didn't work a light schedule in yeah, getting there like either, performing on a few WrestleMania weekend indie events, such as teaming with Sean Waltman and Shane uh, Helms in what was Waltman's final you. bout, and also wrestling a rapid-fire slew of one-minute draws against various Lucha legends in CMLL. He also warred with fellow ageless wonder Minoru Suzuki at October's King of Pro Wrestling, and busted out that seldom-seen Kishin Liger persona for one final time. In the end, come Wrestle Kingdom 2020, Liger teamed with Tatsumi Fujinami, Great Sasuke, and Tiger Mask in an eight-man tag team loss on the first night, before he and old rival Naoki Sano fell to Hiromu Takahashi and Dragon Lee on the second. After which, Liger humbly gave his farewell remarks. It's fair to say that virtually every junior heavyweight worth their stardom has crossed paths with Liger sometime over the last 35 years. Though his push as a star attraction may have receded with age, the generations who followed him all wanted to have their moment with him, even as his age crept up. That might just be the ultimate tribute to Liger, the fact that those who respect and, in many ways, emulate him regard him to be simply timeless. The agelessness we continue to see in Liger is paralleled by a legendary standing that can only come with an unequaled portfolio of transcendent performances. Jushin Thunder Liger leaves behind an incredible legacy as a wrestler of all seasons and all eras, and the measuring stick for the juniors who follow him to look up at in wonder. Thanks very much for watching, and let us know what you think in the comments section down below. You can follow Cultaholic on Twitter at Cultaholic, and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do, then please do check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic, where you can pledge, and don't forget, of course, most importantly of all, to hit subscribe and to join us. Wow. I'm actually impressed of what I've seen so far. Damn. Liger had a, had a hell of a career and it was very popular. So that now it makes a lot of sense of that why he was considered one of the most revolutionized and the most respected professional wrestler that's ever seen. So, so I, if, if he is watching this video and I'm just saying, if, if he sees this, I, I do want to say to, to Mr. Liger that I'm just, I'm very, uh, excuse me, I'm just so nervous. I'm so nervous what I'm going to say. I'm just, I'm just wanted to say that, that congratulations that, that you are now being inducted to be part of the, of the hall of famer. And that you have my respect. So, and I, I'm 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 curious the, uh, of of his ring guitar and, and because because I know the fact that he he's a, he is a mask luchador of a Japanese version of a of a mask fighter. Uh, I wonder that the, his guitar is a little a little base of Ultraman. I, I'm I'm just curious. So it, it's just. It's it is very flashy and it looks it looks really cool. So, eleven, eleven, uh, reign supreme that that he that he's been withheld of his of his championship titles. I've never seen this much of how many days. That he's been as as a remaining champion and being as a former champion, it's just crazy. So, again, I I did not even I didn't even know that he was that he made his little spot in the NXT back in 2015. I didn't know about that, or maybe I missed out on that. I, I, now I feel like I want to check it out, but nevertheless, I think this is a, a considerate honor for him. To be in to, to be inducted, especially to the to the to the British Bulldog. So congratulations. So it, that's all I got to say. So time's up. So I hope you enjoy this, and most of all, thank you, Shadow, for the of this clip. So it now now I get to get to caught on exactly who is the Thunder. Well. Again, it is a considered honor to, to 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 know this, and I think that's cool. So, hit that like button, and also leave a comment down below. I'm Mighty Adventure signing out, but I will catch y'all in the next video. So, take care, everyone.